Hi, Dr. Crowder here. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about chromosomes and chromatids and what the differences are, so I thought I'd make this short video to try and go over the differences, um, specifically with what a chromosome is versus what a chromatid is uh, after and before DNA replication and cell division. So hopefully this image looks somewhat familiar to you. Uh, when we think about the level of how biological information is organized in our cells, uh, we've usually come across pictures like this, and this is true uh, for not only humans, but for all eukaryotes, that we have DNA, right, a double-stranded molecule made up of a sugar phosphate backbone and different nitrogenous bases. In eukaryotes, this DNA is wrapped around proteins called histones. Now there are eight histone proteins that come together with DNA wrapped around them to form the basic unit of chromatin, and that's called a nucleosome. So a nucleosome is DNA wrapped around histone proteins. These nucleosomes further fold up onto each other what we refer to as chromatin. So chromatin refers to DNA wrapped around proteins or histones. It is what we use as a descriptive term to describe the state of the DNA in eukaryotic cells, which is found in the form of chromatin. Again, DNA wrapped around proteins. And then here, right, individual double-stranded molecules of DNA are what we refer to as chromosomes. And these chromosomes are what are uh, passed from one generation to the next or from one cell to the next during division. Now, when we're thinking about chromosomes, this example is specifically for humans. I'm showing you a cell here where we've got the cytoplasm and then the nucleus is the inner white circle. And what I'm showing you is that in humans, here is chromosome one. One copy of chromosome one. We also have chromosome two. We have chromosome three. We have chromosome four, chromosome five, and so on and so forth. We have 22 chromosomes in our cell plus a sex chromosome, which is an X or a Y. So all of these blue chromosomes here are what we call autosomes. These are chromosomes that are the same between the different biological sexes, male or female. The sex chromosomes, the X or Y, differ between males and females. Now, we are human. We are diploid. And so that means for every one of these 23 chromosomes, 22 autosomes plus the sex, we have two copies. Diploid means you have two copies of the entire chromosome set. Much better. So here I'm showing you that we have two copies of chromosome 1, two copies of chromosome 2, so on and so forth. And then for the sex chromosome, you can either have two copies of the X chromosome, which is what is found in individuals that are biologically the female sex, or you can have an X and Y, which is what you would find in an individual that is the biological male sex. Now why don't we go take a closer look, and why don't we focus in here on the chromosome 7 set. We have a blue chromosome and a yellow, or orange. One of these, let's say the orange, is the chromosome 7 you inherited from one parent. The other, the blue chromosome, is the chromosome 7 you inherited from the other parent. And so both of these are chromosome 7. Let's take a gene, let's say the A gene. One of them has the big A allele, and the other has the little a allele of the A gene. Because these are both chromosome 7s, so they have the same genes, they both have gene A. But because one of them is from one parent and the other is from the other, they can have different alleles of those genes. And so we would refer to these as homologs or homologous chromosomes. So homologous chromosomes are a pair of chromosomes that have the same genes in the same linear order, but differ 
at the exact nucleotide or DNA sequence of the different genes because one of those chromosomes came from one parent and the other came from the di um, different parent. Now why don't we take an even deeper dive in what are these lines representing? What is a single chromosome? A single chromosome is one linear molecule of double-stranded DNA. So it is a double-stranded DNA molecule makes up one chromosome and it is a very long, very big molecule of DNA that is in the form of chromatin. This DNA is wrapped around proteins, it gets condensed, and from end to end though, it's one molecule that makes up a single chromosome. So here is the blue chromosome, the orange chromosome is another physically separate molecule of double-stranded DNA. All right, well, why don't we now see what happens with chromosomes when we undergo DNA replication? So again, if we're considering a human cell, that is 2N. They've got, we've got two copies of every chromosome in the human cell. We have 23 unique chromosomes, chromosome 1 through 22 plus the X and Y, two copies of each of those for 46. During the cell cycle, prior to a cell dividing, it has to replicate every single one of those chromosomes. So let's say this cell undergoes replication and makes a copy of all 46 of the chromosomes. And there we go. So hopefully what you can see is that for every single chromosome, we have now made a copy. So why don't we zoom in here on chromosome one. We have two copies of the blue homolog of chromosome one and two copies of the orange homolog of chromosome one. And if we remember that every single line that's showing, shown here represent a chromosome is a linear double-stranded DNA molecule, we now went from 46 linear double-stranded DNA molecules to 92. We've copied every single one of them, so we now have 92 individual double-stranded DNA molecules or 92 individual chromosomes. Now here is where I think the confusion sometimes stems from, is that the term chromosome can be used accurately to describe just one of these lines. So one of these orange lines, you could call it a chromosome and count it as a chromosome. You could also count this pair of orange lines as a chromosome. And so there's lots of confusion because it really depends on the context for your given for how you would determine the number of chromosomes, whereas in this case is a chromosome referring to an individual chromatid, which we'll go to next, or is it referring to a pair of chromatids, uh, which are cases you would find after replication, or is it referring to even a pair of homologs, where if you say how many unique different chromosomes do we have? We have 23 different unique chromosomes, 1 through 22 plus the X and Y, but we have two copies of them in any somatic cell that is not undergoing, um, has not undergone S phase. So it can get a little tricky, so it's really important to pay attention to the context you're given uh, with how you identify the number of chromosomes or chromatids. So let's talk about chromatids a little bit more. Let's zoom in on chromosome one. So here we go, we've zoomed in. And I've even added centromeres. As I mentioned before, if you're going to relate the blue to the orange where each one of these are chromosome one, but with different alleles, same genes. The blue chromosome and the orange chromosome came from different parents and so they are homologous chromosomes or homologs. Okay? However, if you were to zoom in 
on the orange chromosome, we have an exact copy made. And these are referred to as chromatids. So you've got one chromatid and a second chromatid, and these are identical copies to each other, as I've designated here by the big A allele. They have the exact same order of genes, but the exact alleles, the exact same DNA sequence, because it was literally just copied from the other. So we refer to these individual replicated chromosomes as a chromatid. And if you have a pair of them, you could call them a pair of sister chromatids. So you can have sister chromatids, which make up, are made up of two chromatids, right? And a pair of sister chromatids can also be called a replicated chromosome. So this is where it can get tricky because you have one replicated chromosome that is made up of a pair of sister chromatids, and I'll remind you, right, that this is one double-stranded double DNA molecule. And this is one double-stranded DNA molecule. And this is one double-stranded DNA molecule. And this is one double-stranded DNA molecule. So, hopefully, this clarifies the terminology of using chromatid versus chromosome. A replicated chromosome is made up of a pair of sister chromatids, where each one of the double-stranded DNA molecules is an individual chromatid. So let's recap now. We've got our 2N cell that has 46 chromosomes in it, and this cell is going to undergo DNA replication. And now we have a cell that has gone from 2N to 4N, where we have four copies of the 23 chromosome set. We have 92 individual chromatids, or 46 pairs of sister chromatids, or 46 replicated chromosomes. This cell is then under going to go M phase and divide into two totter cells that now are both 2N. So they both have 46 chromosomes or two copies of the set of 23. So hopefully this clarifies some questions. And then to just summarize, if we go back to our original drawing, we have our chromosome labeled here. And I hope we can see that actually this chromosome is a replicated chromosome as it's diagrammed, where we have one sister chromatid and another sister chromatid to make up a pair of sister chromatids. Again, I hope this was helpful and that it clarifies a little bit of how you can use the terminology chromatin, chromosomes, and chromatids.